Good afternoon. It's Jeff Christian. It's actually Tuesday, the 27th of April, about 5 p.m. Coming to you with a little bit of a special note, simply because of some of the noise and distractions going on in the silver market. Uh, we'll still be coming back on Friday, and hopefully we'll have a more substantive discussion about what's going on in the gold and silver markets, and I'll get you some real information. In terms of real information, I will say, you know, the price of silver is trending around $26 uh, an ounce right now. Um, as of the close of business yesterday, we were down to 206.9 million ounces of May open interest. That was off from 416 million ounces on the 16th of April. Uh, the first delivery day is this Friday. So we've got another 206 million ounces of open interest in the May contract, most of which will roll into July between now and um, the end of the week. We had been saying that the potential was that the price could spike up maybe even to $30 during the roll. Uh, it's possible still, uh, but we have three days to find out. So that's a little bit of substantive information about the market. I mostly wanted to talk about some other issues that are going on that, you know, as we've been known to say ever since 2008, 2009, can be distractions to the market. I wanted to stress that CPM Group is pro-silver, obviously. I mean, I wouldn't have spent the last 42 years uh, researching it if I didn't think it was an interesting market and a suitable market for investors. We have, uh, we're also pro-investors. We've worked very hard with investors since the late 1970s, early 1980s to try to help them uh, invest wisely and profitably, not only in silver, but in gold and platinum group metals and a host of other commodities. Uh, so we're pro-investors, we're pro-silver. And people tend to forget that because we sometimes say, hey, this is not the time to buy silver. Other times we say, this is the time to buy silver. And yes, again, you know, we still think that the price of silver is probably going to rise over the next few years because of macroeconomic and political fundamentals that will be driving investors into buying increased amounts of, of silver. Given all of the noise and distraction that's going on in the silver market, we've decided to host an open forum. Now we've been talking about creating these open forums, challenge your assumptions for uh, our clients, our paid clients, our retail investor clients, as well as, as our large corporate and commercial and governmental clients. Uh, and we still plan to do that. And we still plan to launch those. Uh, right now we're actually neck deep in finishing off our silver yearbook uh, for 2021. Um, and that will be launched on May 11th. But given a lot of the noise and distractions that are circling around the periphery of the silver market that we've been sucked into, uh, we decided to have another open forum and we're looking at organizing it. And it will focus on silver. It will be a place where investors and others can register. They can send us questions ahead of time. They can send us questions during the event. It's no real formal presentation. It's really going to be a question and answer period where we can address a lot of issues that have come up that people are perplexed because they're hearing things that don't make sense to them, that don't quite seem right. And they're hearing a lot of promises and a lot of spurious information. And they're turning to us and saying, yeah, Jeff, you guys seem like a rational, based source of information about silver. Uh, you're sitting on the biggest database on silver, the biggest library, the biggest file. You've been in the silver market since the 1970s doing fundamental research on an unbiased basis. Uh, you have a pretty good track record. So tell us what's going on. So we're gonna create this open forum. Now, when we do that, we're going to invite a fellow who calls himself by the happy Hawaiian who has been part of the Wall Street Silver uh, information flow on the internet. Uh, and we've had some conversations with him and he's one of the more rational, reasonable, intelligent people who uh, seems to be honestly trying to understand what's going on in the silver market and make sense of it. 
And so we're, we have invited him and he has accepted uh, that he would come in as an interlocutor, ask us questions, and also help keep the, the question period from investors focused on what really they should be talking, we should be talking about. We're not quite sure when we're going to do that. We're looking into the logistics of which platform to use, how many people we can get. We do want to give people time enough to hear about this and sign up and register. Uh, but hopefully within the next two, three weeks, we'll have this open forum on silver and we'll invite everybody that wants to come to sign up, register, send questions ahead of time, just listen or just listen and say, hey, wait a second, that gives me a question. Stay tuned for details. They will come. Now, yesterday I was approached by a guy named Chris Marcus, and I've seen a little bit about him. He has been extremely critical of things that we've said, things that I've said, uh, my attire, uh, my demeanor, uh, from a position of less than full knowledge. Um, so he has said a lot of nasty things about me and he sent me an email yesterday. He said, hey, Jeff, I think you're a liar, but we're going to have a round table with my buddies and I uh, later this week. And we're inviting you to come and listen to us trash you. And oh, we'll give you a limited chance to defend yourself. And I said, nah, I don't think I'm going to do that. We are working on this open forum. That'll be a much better uh, platform for a rational, open discussion. Besides which, these guys actually have a history of lying. And they also, a lot of them are compromised. They're sort of working for or being paid by dealers who are working on fear and greed to get investors to buy silver at higher premiums than they need to pay. And I think perhaps one of the reasons why they're bad-mouthing me is because over the last few weeks, CPM Group has promoted understanding about what reasonable premia are for 1,000-ounce bars, 100-ounce bars, silver eagles in the market, which kind of hurts those guys who want to go out and say, oh, my God, the silver market's going to explode. And you have to be careful. You know, the silver market's going to explode because of a short position that doesn't really exist that we talked about for 30 years, and we've been saying it's going to ex uh, explode in the bank's face, and when it does, the price is going to $100. And it's kind of funny because some of these guys speak reverentially about a fellow named Jerome Smith who wrote a couple of books about silver in the 1970s and 1980s. And in 1980, Jerome Smith said, look, we're going to run out of silver. The world's just going to run out of silver. There's not enough silver, and the price is going to $100 by the mid 80s. And they speak reverentially about him. Now, in the intervening 40 years, the world has mined about 19 billion ounces of gold, silver. That is from a time when Jerome was writing when we had reserves of about 7 billion ounces. So we've mined 244% as much as we had reserves in the ground when he said, we're gonna run out of silver. And the reason why we have more reserves today we have more than twice as much reserves today as we did then. We have about 19 billion ounces of reserves. Uh, and the reason we have more reserves, even though we've mined billions of ounces uh, of silver in the intervening four, four decades, is because as the price rises and as technology changes, more resources, which are sub-economic reserves, become reserves. It's something that I guess he didn't pay attention to. A lot of other people didn't pay attention to in the 1970s. Uh, they didn't understand the difference between reserves, resources, and prices. And we've done you know, some work and we've put out a market commentary recently about that. Um, so I said to Chris, no, you know, I just don't think I wanna go to a round table where a bunch of people who really don't know what they're talking about trash me while I'm sitting there. Uh, and we are going to do this open forum and you guys are invited to come and ask legitimate questions, intelligent questions, if possible. Everybody's going to be invited to come and invest, uh, ask questions. So it's coming up. I don't want to give these guys any platform, and it just doesn't make sense. Funny, one of the guys that was on this email list was Bill Murphy, and Bill Murphy from uh, GATA. And 
Murphy's always been a, a, a pain in the side since he got into the business in 1998. And I debated him in 2010 when he was uh, accusing me of various things and I knocked him out. And I debated him again in 2011 and I knocked him out. And, and there are articles on our website uh, about the 2010 debate, which quite frankly, I think was a better debate, but it was only audio. And you can find the video of the 2011 debate, which was during the Silver Summit, and we had Andrew Bell from BNN uh, moderate it, and Kitco broadcast it live. And it's recorded, and it's available on our website and other places. You can sort of see it down there. The following year, or yeah, I guess it was 2012, um, I revealed that Andrew McGuire was, in fact, a former car leasing agent who had never been a banker and never worked at J. Aaron or any other bank the way he had said, the way Gatta had said, the way Eric Sprott and Eric King, World, King World News, and others had claimed he was. So I just got weary of debating those kinds of people. Now, I have been approached recently by a couple legitimate news organizations that said, hey, what about a debate? And I said, give me a worthy debating uh, opponent. Let's have a, an intelligent, informed debate. I'm there. And there are a couple news agencies that are out there looking for somebody who would be a suitable uh, debater. But people who have consistently lied, who have consistently misrepresented what I've said, who have consistently represented, uh, misrepresented what other people said, from, from William McChesney Martin, who was the Federal Reserve Board Chairman from 1951 to 1970, to Alan Greenspan, to Secretary of the Treasuries, to the CFTC commi uh, Acting Commissioner now, these guys just consistently misrepresent reality. I have no interest in debating someone who can't be honest. So here's some of the stuff. I wrote back and I said, you know what? Thanks, but no thanks. We already having this open forum. You're invited. And you can post this response to your, your invitation on your website, which they didn't do. I can understand that. But then they started writing me letters. Why, hey, Jeff, hey, why don't you comment on Rostin Benham, that's the acting CTF, CFTC chairman, assertion that the CFTC purposefully controlled the silver price to keep it under $30 earlier in this year during the run on SLV. And I wrote back and I said, well, problem is that he didn't actually say that. And there is this video of, uh, of a of an interview with him, a fireside chat, they called it, from the Futures Industry Association uh, conference, uh, I guess, a few weeks ago in Florida. And that's not what he said. Never said that. What he said was, we have systems in place. There are rules and regulations that the exchanges impose. There are rules and regulations that the CFTC imposes. And those rules and regulations, those, those mechanisms, the market structures, he called them, the clearing and margin structures all worked to keep the silver market stable during that time. That became, excuse me for one second, that became in these guys' minds, oh, the CFTC purposefully acted in concert with others to keep the price of silver under $30. We said, but that's not what he said. He didn't say that. Listen to the tape over and over again. He didn't say that. You know, he did not say that. Why are you saying that he said that? And they would say, no, he did. Well, what he said was that the market structures, you know, are, and we have some of these things highlighted, the clearing structure. You know, well, that's the same as saying that the CFTC was suppressing the silver price to keep it under $30. And no, it's not. You know, if you went to court and you said, I'm going to sue the CFTC for manipulating the silver price. And look at these quotes that I've got here. It's clear that they were trying to suppress the silver price under $30. First off, you'd be thrown out of court. Second thing is you might be sanctioned for a frivolous lawsuit. The difference between what Rustin said and what you're claiming he said is so big as to be ludicrous. And it's not even a good lie. And then after you're caught in a lie, you continue to lie and say, no, 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 he said that, he said that. Well, what he said was that there were market structures in place that kept the market stable 
at a time of some agitation. And he might have chosen some words that I wouldn't have chosen, uh, but he didn't say that the CFTC acted to control and purposefully keep the silver price under $30. Yeah, you know, if you want to go lie, go lie somewhere else. Don't shit on the silver market. The silver market has enough problems trying to convince investors that it's a legitimate inter, uh, investment. It doesn't need its reputation further tarnished by consistent misrepresentation by people who are either trying to fool folks or simply don't know what they're talking about. It's really offensive and it's counterproductive for investors in silver to do a good job. So we said, no, I don't need to put up with that. Now, we wrote about a nine, 10 page piece and we posted it on our website, www.cpmgroup.com. We've also started to upload some of our old uh, presentations and reports and files. There was a report I wrote, actually it was a very interesting scenario about OTC derivative regulations back in, I think 2000, 2001 called Two Letters on Derivatives, and it's in there. It's very interesting. There's a bunch of Silver Summit presentations where we talked about some of the myths and the misinformation that's regularly circulated about silver and gold. And those things are all in there. There's a, a section of our website called Our Market Views. And I think if you go in there and wander around, you will find an enormous body of information that will help you understand how the silver market works why the silver market works that way, and why sometimes when you hear things and they don't say, sound quite legitimate, they're often not. There's also some information in that document that we wrote called The Company You Keep about some of the people who regularly and consistently pass these falsehoods in their background and the cottage industries they've created after they were kicked out of the uh, futures industry by the CFTC for malfeasance. So that's all there. And I put in the full transcripts of the emails these guys sent me. So you can see exactly what they said. And I put in my full responses to them. So you can see exactly what I said. And you can see them say, well, why don't you talk about Rustin suppressing the silver price to keep it below $30? Because he didn't say that. Oh, but he did. See, he said there were market mechanisms in place that kept the market calm. But that's not the same as saying, oh, we consciously went in and purposefully went in and kept the silver price below $30. Saying, no, the system worked. It's like, hey, the subway got me home alive tonight and I didn't even lose a limb. Clearly, the MTA management was in there working on it on, on my side to make sure I didn't get maimed. It's just, a, it's, 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 it defies logic. So, in conclusion, coming soon to the internet near you, CPM Group's open forum on silver. Stay tuned, we'll have news on that. On May 11th, we're gonna be launching our silver yearbook. Over here is last year's silver yearbook. You can see it's a nice thick book. It's probably the definitive work. You'll find a lot of information in there that answers questions. You'll find a lot of information that sort of causes you to say, Ah, oh, yeah, you know, that makes a lot more sense than what I heard from those guys who market silver. Uh, that's coming up May 11th. And then we are still planning to get to our challenger assumptions, but we keep getting distracted by having to respond to inappropriate comments from inappropriate people. And hopefully that'll pass. But you know what? My study in the history of gold and silver over the last 6,000 years those folks have always been there. They always will be there. There are people who market silver and gold based on fear and misinformation. And that's their business. Nothing I can say, nothing that other people can say will drive them away. Now, Jesus can kick them out of the temple, but they'll come right back or they'll set up shop next door at the deli. There are people who are true believers. And I'll never convince them because... For a believer to change his beliefs or her beliefs based on evidence and facts and information is heresy. It's not a belief if you can understand it and prove it or disprove it statistically. 
So we're never going to deal with those guys. But there are a lot of investors out there who look at the financial markets, and not gold and silver, but the whole finance market. Why is the stock market at record levels 12 years into a cataclysmic long-term secular economic problem that hasn't been solved? You know, why is the bond market where it is? What are all these things I hear about, you know, uh, spoofing in the treasury market, in the currency market, the LIBOR scandal, in the interest rate fixed income market? A whole range of issues that cause investors to be disquieted. And they go searching for answers and they go on the internet and they don't find a lot of good information, but they find these carnival barkers, as I called them a few weeks ago, and in this piece that I wrote, uh, uh, the company you keep, I call them snake oil salesmen. They find these guys and they prey on these investors' fears and uncertainties and greed. And those people, we can come along and say, well, you know, it's not quite that bad. We had one uh, person that we know who bought a whole lot of silver premiums at the silver coins at the top of the market and paid a high premium for them. And we pointed out that because that person didn't feel like he was going to be charting their, these coins around, he had overpaid for it. And that he could in fact have bought a thousand ounce bar on an allocated basis at the same dealer and kept it there and saved something like 14, you know, a whole lot of money. So we said, you know, sell those coins back, recapture the premiums. Uh, the silver price has fallen from $30 to $26 in the interim since you bought it. Uh, and you're going to recoup half of your mark to market loss just by converting from coins to a thousand ounce bars and do it on an allocated basis. There's a lot there. There's going to be a lot more. I'm sure these guys are going to get around tomorrow and they're going to like, you know, scratch their crotch and, and say, what a terrible person I am. Can't stop that. That's human nature. You know, as far as these guys are concerned, Trump won the election and the communists uh, stole it from them. I can't change those kinds of opinions and I don't care to, but I wish they would get out of the place where I craft my business because I've worked very hard to be honest and full of integrity and detail and to provide not only investors, but governments, mining companies, smelters, refiners, industrial users, brokers, buy side institutions, sell side institutions, anybody with a large exposure to commodities prices with information and analysis that they can use to either save money or make money. And having these snake oil salesmen pollute the waters in which I fish is really actually offensive to me. So I'll see you Friday, and I am going to promise you that barring unforeseen noise and distractions from the galleys, uh, I will try to have a more substantive conversation on Friday about real things going on in the gold and silver market. Take care until then and have a good time. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, enjoy some spring weather. Thank you and goodbye.